Gentlemen, Mikey Violator in the building. Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up, dude? How are you doing? How's the day going, sir? It's going. We're going through. Uh, I just left Vegas. We did laundry, and now we're sitting in a parking lot while one of our guys eats a pita sandwich or something. For sure. How was how was Vegas? Was Vegas good? Did you do any gambling? No, we we literally pulled into Vegas, did our laundry, and ate some tacos. That was it. Hell yeah! How <clears throat> how is tour so far? You guys are on tour with uh with Attila, I believe. He is legend. A couple others. How's that going? It's good. Um, it's been the shows have been pretty wild. We've uh. We've been doing like fun things with the crowd every night. Something that's just kind of like different every night. Like we never know what we're gonna do. Like the other night we played musical chairs, and then that is uh, awesome. One night we had everybody lay down on the floor and roll around in circles. I, I saw the pictures of that when you had everybody lay down in the pit and everything. That's cool. Um, is it? Is there? Is the crowd yeah. ever like? We don't really want to do that. Blah blah blah. Or is it? <laughs> or is it the response really good? Like, dude, I want a chair right now. I want to play with you guys. We always we always tell them that it's, you know whatever we do whatever we ask them to do they only have to do it if it's that's what we always say like we're like you don't have to put your hands up you don't have to walk up here It'd be more fun if you did but you don't have to hell and you I guys because like I get telling me like what to do and then getting mad like if I'm not moving around and it's like I'll move around if I like you guys like just relax so. We, we try to kind of keep that in mind when we're on stage and it's like not get angry at the crowd if they don't want to mosh or if there's like 10 people there and like the opening band's like everybody move and it's like dude like they don't they're not going to man there's nobody here to do it <laughs> we gotta build up to the moving bro we gotta build up to it saying like yeah Hell yeah, so you guys just dropped a, an awesome album it's not easy being human there's tons of crazy features on here my my first question is: Is there someone that you weren't able to get on the album that it almost worked out, and for some reason, just a label didn't clear or something? But is there one other feature that you just weren't able to get? Yeah, that's funny you asked that. Um, Jacoby from Papa Roach was supposed to be on one of the tracks, and his management jumped in, and it turned into this like really crazy thing. And I think what's even crazier is like he wrote he wrote his whole part and he sent it over to me and it sounded amazing. But the, yeah, red tape from um, management and stuff kind of got in the way of it all. And it didn't come to fruition, even though, you know, we, we wrote the song together. And so what happened was I had to end up taking him off the song and I wrote a completely different verse myself. And yeah, so Jacoby from Papa Roach was supposed to be on the record. For sure. Uh, that Mike, was the one. Max Max is my co-host for today. Sometimes I rotate who's uh, helping me run the show. He's actually in a band called Bantamweight. I want to give him a, a chance to ask a question or two, if that's cool. Nice yeah, to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love hearing about like the beginning of a band. You guys have been a band for a minute, I know. Uh, I was wondering, how long was it uh, between the start of the band and your first tour? And then uh, how was that first tour? What was that like? Um, so the first, the start of the band, like Islander, we came from like another band that we were doing locally for a little while, but then we had stopped for like three years or something, like playing in local bands. And then we got back together and started jamming and it turned into Islander and let's we'll see, 2011 is when we started the band. I think our first tour was in 2012 and I booked, I booked the whole tour myself. It was like a 10 day run and I booked it using, okay, so I made up this fake booking agent email address called Broken Bones <laughs> Booking Agency at Gmail. Hell yeah. And that's how I would get guarantees or like pizza for shows and stuff. So they would take me more seriously. I noticed if there was a booking agent instead of a band going, hey, like, can we play this show? Well, so what I would do is I would message them and say, hey, I'm 
I would use my middle name. My middle name is Shane. I would say I'm Shane from Broken Bones Booking Agency, and I'm trying to book this band um, right now to play a show in your area because they're playing. Like what I would do is I would get like such and such a date with like a really big band, and then I would put their name inside the email and say we're trying we're we have a show the night prior with so and so, but the guys are trying to fill an off date on the next day in your town and i would just keep going down cities until the tour was filled up and that that was really it i would just look at calendars of other of other shows coming through like different towns and i would just book them as far out as i could and um we went on that tour and i think one show ended up dropping or whatever but it was fun um you know, it wasn't like a tour package or anything. So every show was completely different from the other one. Like, you never knew what you were going to get. Yeah. So. It happens. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. That was awesome. <laughs> I do want to play some stuff off yeah. off the new album. Uh, I want to start with Skin Crawl. Uh, is there, I mean, obviously working with, with uh, Head and Dan of Zayo and Bruce, a living sacrifice. That's crazy. I imagine not everybody was in the studio at the same time, but how how is an artist... Do you do you do you approach a track and are you like I got this guy in mind? Yet alone three different people to be involved in the song itself. Like how does how did this song come about? It's weird because I always okay I get that question sometimes and I never know how to answer it because I'm always like how did we do that? So to answer it the easiest I know how. The riff and we had Brian uh, head from corn write a riff around it or like write his little part around it or whatever like for the it, like the intro and then like he came up with this like sick like lead thing and it, it, okay so I'm trying to remember <laughs> <laughs> okay I will I'll say that the label didn't have anything to do with like any of that so a lot, a lot of people think like oh you're on a label I bet they contacted everybody like no like we just contacted our friends we were like, hey, would you jump on this track? And we start building it kind of like Legos. We're like, so you know who would be sick to do this part? It would be so sick if we got so-and-so. And then they'll be, we'll be like, okay, I'll text him and see if he'll do it. And so next thing you know, we were like, what if we did like a rap album and like just got different guests on like each song, but like some of them on the same track? Because we don't see a lot of rock bands do that. And we wanted to kind of introduce people to the bands we've listened to growing up and also show love to up and coming bands that are right there with us or bands that are you know i don't know just that we believe in um so we hit up zayo and living sacrifice and you know we asked those guys if they would be down to do something and they said yeah send us the track and you just kind of start building from there kind of like legos you, you don't know what it's going to look like exactly but it ends up being something so hell yeah let's play it right now i see you have a nintendo hat on i'm a big gamer we'll get there in a second let's jam skin crawl real quick yeah it's fire uh a couple of yeah, couple of fun damn. questions and then i want to do some some trivia with you bro if you're down um first for first fun question okay. what is the best video game ever made <laughs> game ever made. okay um my favorite video game ever made is blaster master Wow. But the best video game ever made is it's a toss up between four video games that just come straight to mind, I okay. guess. Okay. That's cool. Super Mario Box. Um Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um GTA five and Red Dead Redemption Two. Respect. So mostly open world RPG ish kind of style games, like where you can like advance your character, travel wherever you want to go. Things that let you want to do, like I think that's kind of what people look for in like a video game. At least I do. I guess like something that you can just kind of in and be like, okay, I'm gonna immerse myself in this and leave the real world behind. But um, again, my favorite video game is Blaster Master for the regular Nintendo. It's an old school one. Uh, another fun one. Uh, I imagine this has already happened a couple times, but let's say Attila's like, boys, tonight we're drinking more than we've ever drank in our entire life. Can you out drink <laughs> anyone in Attila or vice versa? Who who can party the hardest? Depends on what we're drinking. 
we're talking about drinking like water or Coca Cola, <laughs> I could I could probably out drink them. But um, as far as like alcohol, I try not to drink too much of it, and so that 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 would have to go to Attila. But also, I mean, I think a lot of it is, you know, people don't realize like rock bands and stuff we sing about stuff sometimes and there's some bands that sing about things that are, they, they really live and then there's some bands that sing about things that they live but they don't live them as hard as people think they do i think Attila's is one of those bands that um they definitely don't party enough like party hard enough to like kill themselves like i think a lot of people think that they're out here getting wasted every single day and from what i can tell you know they're they're trying to like stay alive for the most part so. Oh, yeah. Well said. Well said. Uh, I have to ask oh, the overwhelming question that our fans wanted me to ask regards. A while back, we had Kevin Lyman on the from the Warp Tour on the show. You already know what I'm going to ask about the uh, the you guys getting booted off. I'd always heard always heard a rumor that it was because uh, you guys just went level one million on stage and just in the heat of the moment, destroyed the drum set. Is there is that the correct, accurate <laughs> story? Or what? what is the truth behind why you guys were booted off Warp Tour? I'll get to that, but did you guys ask Kevin the same thing? <laughs> we did not. We actually asked Kevin about, uh, what was the, it was like Cross Faith? Something about, we asked them something about Cross Faith getting kicked off because they drank too much Jaeger like every single day. Uh... Gotcha. <laughs> I don't. I don't really remember. It was a while ago, but okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what happened about Warp Tour. Um, the show wasn't even really that crazy. It was, it was just like a normal show, and at the end of the set, I just looked back at the drum kit, and thought, "Hey, I'm gonna do like, kind of like a a front flip over the drum kit, and kind of just like." not even tackle the drum kit, just kind of like do like this like little like swoosh thing I know how to do like over the drum kit. So I went to just like flip on, into the drums and one of the, it was the floor tom. The floor tom fell, it got dented. There was a dent, it was still usable. The next band used it 15 minutes later after after we got off stage. Um, and that, that was literally it. So I think by the time it got back to Kevin, word was he thought the whole stage was like burning down or something. so i went to his office with my manager Look what and he you. said that was your work tour and he put his hand out and to shake my hand and i'm gonna be straight up man kevin kevin i think he had so much on his plate at that time i think that um i think that he was just you know kind of done with everything it was his last warp tour um if I could go back and change anything, it would be not apologizing um, on the internet because we were freaked out at the time. We didn't know what was going on, and so we just like let everybody know, like, like we're sorry, like that we dented this drum kit. Um, and now I look back, and I'm just like, it's so stupid. Like, there was a little, a little speck of a dent in a drum kit, and we got kicked off work tour. We weren't even getting paid to do that work tour. We were doing it for free on part of the work tour. We weren't getting catering on that work tour. None of that is uh, shade at Kevin. It's just, you know, we, we chose to do that. Those were decisions that we made. It's just so frustrating that we drove out to start work tour in the very first day that we're there. And it was my first work tour. I had never even been before. Um, I was there for a total of five hours before I got kicked out. So it made me feel kind of like I was playing like a church show, like where they didn't want us to move, move the pew or something. But like before we like got on stage, it just it, it felt everything but punk rock. That that's kind of I feel you. That's kind of the vibe. So I I just felt kind of misunderstood about the whole thing. I have photos of the drum kit, and again, like I said, it was used not only that day but the rest of the tour. Um, nothing. That the that's why we got kicked off, and it got way bigger and more publicity than it should have. I got gotcha. you, uh, so. Max. There's like some background noise in, in in the background that keeps I think cutting them out every 
a little bit. If you could mute your mic just for a second, I'm sorry. Uh, Mikey, go. I, Mikey we got time for, for one one more final uh, question, but I, I really want to ask you this. What song are you most proud of regarding the new album? I want to play what's the song that you're most proud of out of the 17 tracks. Oh, man. I know it's hard. They're all your babies. They're all your babies, but if you had to pick one. Oh, man. Let me think. Let me think. I'm trying to even remember all of them because there's 17 of them. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. I, I really can't do that. I'll, how about this? I'll just pick one that that um, I think everybody should go jam. I think it's really cool. I don't think it's getting enough attention that we just did a song with Spencer from Under Oath. I think that's pretty sick. So I would say uh, the song we scream that starts the record is the one that kind of just kicks it into high gear, and um, hopefully we can do a tour with Under Oath soon and perform that song together every night that would be amazing and smash drum kits hell yeah let's go give me a hell yeah this is we scream we're hanging out with mikey Islander. fire dude oh you got uh you're you're a wrestling fan you got sting oh yeah i'm a huge wrestling fan who let's say this okay who's your favorite wrestler I, for me, there's so many. It's so hard. I like a bunch of different wrestlers for different reasons. I like Rey Mysterio just because of how wild and crazy. I mean, obviously, Sting, I guess, by showing me that, is your favorite wrestler. Oh, yeah. Um, so check out our music video for Crazy Crazy World. Um, Sting stars in the whole thing. I, I have seen it. That's actually really cool how you pulled that off. Um, man, Sting, Sting's an OG legend for sure. Hell yeah. Uh, Max, yeah, yeah. Favorite. Max, do you have any uh, final questions before we let Mikey go? I know he's a busy guy. Uh, is there any final questions you got for him? Yeah, I was kind of wondering because uh, being a vocalist, uh, especially doing a, a style of music where it's really taxing on the voice, um, is there anything that you do in particular to keep your voice from completely giving out on you? If you're touring night after night, it seems like it really takes a toll. Yeah, there's this stuff called kick-ass immunity that we use. Um, I kid you not, it's uh, it's that that's the actual name of it too. Um, you can get it at Whole Foods. I don't know how to explain what that stuff does, but it it helps us all in the band kind of stay decently healthy. Um, other than that, screaming correctly is a good is a good one. And also um, doing warm-ups every night before shows. I do lip rolls before every single show. And that kind of opens up my my voice to be able to kind of hit higher, you know, ranges or whatever. And also um, I take one little bitty hit. And I say hit, I don't, it's not even a shot. It's just like a little bitty swig of whiskey before shows because it just opens up my throat. I don't know how to explain that other than it just opens it up. And, um, yeah, that's kind of gets the blood moving. That's kind of my secrets. I get, I don't know. I don't really have crazy secrets other than just, uh, find out your limits with your voice and kind of, uh, don't go beyond those limits until the last show of the tour. That's what I usually do. Last show of the tour, I probably sound better than every other show. Cause I push so hard. Yeah, have you ever lost your voice? And uh, what do you do? Do you just cancel a show if you lose your voice, or what happens then? Oh no, you you go on stage and you you make the best of it. Um, I've lost my voice. One time I wasn't even able to use my voice. We were in Florida, and when I say I wasn't able to use my voice, I mean I couldn't make a noise come out of my my mouth. I stood on stage and I just handed off the mic to fans like different fans every song like <laughs> so power there, through no, if i can walk or even if i can't walk i'm probably not going to cancel respect i like that mentality for sure definite respect yeah, that's yeah. badass mikey we know you're a busy yeah. guy i this is the last question we got for you it's a chat question chat wants to know you played mayhem fest in 2014 with event sevenfold trivium and others who was your favorite to watch while on the tour with those bands Probably Corn. Uh, Corn had a killer set every single night. Um, stood st side stage almost every show for him. And then uh, 
I think the other one would be it was fun to watch the singer from uh, Cannibal Corpse. It was fun to watch him sling his neck around every day. His neck, his neck's giant. <laughs> Hell yeah! I can't, like go Google it. I'll check it out after this. That's, Do- that's my. <laughs> That's Corpse hilarious. Grinder. He's the legend, man. Mike, Legendary we, Yeah, Corpse Grinder. Mike, we appreciate you spending some time uh, while you're on the road, man, doing this. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. I have a kick-ass show sold out every night. Sell a ton of merch. More importantly, just uh, just do your thing, man. Be happy and uh, be stay healthy. Thank you guys for uh, having me. Sorry I'm in a van with ET. Um, I wish I had a cooler background guys right now but no i appreciate you guys having me man much respect and seriously honored to be on the show thank you brother thank you, bro. islander everybody you. please go get it's not easy being human jam it there's so many features on it there's so many dope records mikey stay safe brother we appreciate it Give me mikey a Take care, man. Okay.